Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial for animal classification. Today, we're going to show you how to collect data for machine learning analysis and use it in decision tree learning. Before we dive into the coding part, let's quickly talk about our project's goal. We'll be creating a decision tree to classify animals based on their characteristics. A decision tree is a model that makes decisions by splitting the data into branches at different decision points, or nodes. Each node represents a question about the data, and each branch represents the possible answers to those questions. For example, to classify an animal, the decision tree might ask if it has hair. If yes, the decision tree will ask if it produces milk. If no, the decision tree will ask if it is aquatic. This process continues until an animal is classified. In this video, we will explore how to use Google Colab, explore the dataset, use the dataset to train the model, and add animals to the dataset to see how that improves the model. Start off with showing you how to use Google Colab, then we'll step through each of the steps of the project together. Remember that you can find all project details as well as the starter code in the description below. Google Colab is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button right here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control Enter on your keyboard or command enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here or by this green check mark here. First, you want to download the zoo2.xlsx file from the project page. For this tutorial, I'll be using Google Sheets. But if you prefer, there are also instructions on the project page for how to do this project in Microsoft Excel as well. To upload the file to Google Sheets, you can just click on this folder icon here Click on Upload, and then drag your download into this box here. You will now see your file here, and to open it, all you need to do is click on it. Now, let's take a moment to look at the data set. We see the animal name on the very left here. We can see that there is a bear, lion, chicken, and so on. For the other characteristics, we see that most of them are filled with zeros and ones. The zero represents a no, and the animal does not have this characteristic, and the one represents a yes, the animal does have this characteristic. For example, we see that a bear has hair, but no feathers or eggs. Bears do produce milk for their young, and so on. One of the exceptions to the zeros and ones are the legs. In that case, the number is simply how many legs the animal has, and we can see that bears have four. Group number is another exception to the zeros and ones. Group number is the group the animal belongs to and what our model is trying to predict. And we can see here that one corresponds to mammal, two corresponds to bird, three corresponds to reptile, and so on. The reason our data is in zeros and ones instead of no and yes, and numbers for the group the animal belongs to instead of the actual name, is because machine learning algorithms learn best with numbers and not words. Once you understand the dataset, we'll now save the file as a CSV file so that we could use it in our code. To download this as a CSV file, you need to go to File, Download, and save it as a CSV. After you finish downloading the CSV file, navigate to My Drive in your Google Drive, create a folder called Animal Classification, and inside that folder, upload your CSV file by dragging and dropping it here. I've also uploaded the animal classification Python notebook here, which you can also get on the project page. And to open it, you can also just double click it. Now let's get started with the coding section of this project. And first we'll need to start with importing the libraries so that we can use the functions that are in them. We'll now mount our Google Drive so that we could use the CSV file that we uploaded earlier. For the next code block, make sure that the file name here is the same as the file name that you uploaded earlier in your Google Drive. When you run this code block, we can now see the first few rows of our data set. Now we'll be getting our data ready to train on our decision tree model. We first need to drop some columns by running this code. We'll be dropping the animal name column since an animal's name does not help identify which group an animal belongs to. And we'll also drop the group name column since we'll be using the numerical version of it instead. Then we'll separate the data into inputs and target. 
we can see that inputs is everything we'll be using to classify the animal, which would be hair, feathers, eggs, and so on. Meanwhile, target is the column we are trying to classify, which would be the group number column. Then we'll split the data into train and test. We have more details on why we need to split the data into training and testing in the project instructions below. Training the model is very simple. This code block makes the decision tree model and this one trains the model. This was made easy because of the libraries we imported earlier. We can see how accurate our model was by testing it on data we separated out for testing earlier. You can see the accuracy is very low. It is 0%, which means the model got everything wrong. That is because our data set is so small that the model did not have enough time to learn and recognize the patterns and common characteristics between different types of animals. We can also see where the model messed up. First row represents our test data and the second row represents the predictions that our model made. In the test data, the animal was actually a 5, but our model thought it was 3. And for the next animal, it was actually a 6, but our model thought it was a 7. And for the next animal, it was actually a 1, but our model thought it was a 7. We can see this more easily in the next code block. And we can see that an amphibian was mistaken for a reptile, an insect was mistaken for an invertebrate, and a mammal was mistaken for an invertebrate. We can visualize how accurate our model was by running this code block here, which will generate this graph. If our model was 100% accurate, our points would be set in a diagonal line like this. That is because a mammal would have been classified as a mammal, a bird would have been classified as a bird, a reptile as a reptile, and so on. You can see that this graph represented our data from earlier, which consisted of an amphibian, being mistaken for a reptile, a mammal being mistaken for invertebrate, and an insect being mistaken for invertebrate. We can also see exactly which animals were misclassified. First, run the first code block so that we could use these helper functions. We can see from the list of test data earlier at which points the animals were misclassified. And in this case, it was all of them, 0, 1, 2. Next, you can run this helper function block and in this one to see which animals were misclassified. And we can see that a newt is an amphibian but was classified as a reptile, a ladybug is an insect and was classified as an invertebrate, and a bear is a mammal and was classified as an invertebrate. We can also see which characteristics were the most telling of what group an animal belonged to if we visualize the decision tree. You can see at the top of the decision tree is fins right now which says that this is the most important characteristic for determining the type of animal. But note that this may change the more data you add, so make sure to check this tree every time you change the data. Let's take a moment to understand this decision tree. The first node we're looking at evaluates whether the value for fins is less than 0.5. If it is, we proceed down this branch to the next decision point, which checks for feathers. On the other hand, if the fins value is greater than 0.5, we classify the animal as a fish right away. In summary, for this decision tree, fins are a crucial decision point. If the fin value is greater than 0.5, the animal is a fish. If not, we look at feathers next. Now it's time to go back to our spreadsheet and add more data to see if we can increase the accuracy of the model. We recommend using sites like a to z Animals, Animalia, and Flexbooks, which will all be linked in the project instructions. From here on, you can add any animals you like, but keep the number of each type of animal the same. You can keep track of how many of each animal you have in the second spreadsheet here. Go through this project again when you have four of each animal, six of each animal, eight of each animal, then 10 of each animal. You might want to save a different file for every time you save four, six, eight, ten 10 of each type of animal. So all you need to do to do that is download, click CSV, and uh, once you download that, you can rename it in your downloads like this. You can either choose this button or right click and rename. So I'll call this zoo6.csv since it has six of each type of animal. Also, when you are saving your CSV file, make sure you are saving on this page and don't 
um, save this page or else the CSV file will save this information instead of the one that you want for our Google Notebook. Then when you want to test the notebook on your new data set, you can just re-navigate to your My Drive and inside your Animals Classification folder and then just drag and drop your new CSV file. Then we can re-navigate back to our Google Colab notebook and rename the file name here. And since we renamed it to zoo6.csv, we just have to change that here. Then you can just rerun all of the cells again, or you can also click on runtime here and run all. For the new data set, we can now see its new accuracy, its new predictions, as well as its new tree. And with that, we come to the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions for this project in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.